Saturday, everybody, um, and good morning. I just got back from spin class. It was so good. The music was so, so good. I had fun. I went with a really good friend of mine, um, and we just enjoyed the day. But, uh, yeah, so it's like 9 o'clock. I'm going to get a little cleaned up, and that's it. But Stephen had a little treat this morning, made homemade biscotti yesterday, so... While I get ready, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that. So I currently have the oven preheating at 375. I have three and a quarter cups of flour and one tablespoon of baking powder mixed together in this bowl. And in this bowl is three eggs, a tablespoon of almond extract, a splash of vanilla extract, and one cup of sugar. And I've just whisked and combined the eggs and the sugar. And now all I'm going to do is add the eggs to this mixture. I'm gonna take these out because these will not be the greatest to mix with. And get the dough made. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to, you should always add the dry into the wet. Now we will add our dry ingredients to our wet. And I am going to try to do this in thirds. All right, I just floured my hands because the dough is really, really wet. If you reach in this without your hands being floured, you will have a mess. I'm gonna split this into two pieces, and then I'm just going to press it out. No need to rolling pin it. I'm just going to press it out into a rectangle. So this is what my dough looks like. We are going to go ahead, throw these in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes at 375. Then we'll let them cool, we'll cut them up, and then put them back in the oven to toast. The first biscottis are out. This is what they look like. What I'm going to do is I just picked up the parchment paper, put them on cooling racks. As soon as they're cool enough to handle, I'm gonna take a pizza cutter and cut them into strips and then throw them back in the oven, cut side up for six to 10 minutes on each side, and then they'll be perfectly done. I am just adding the biscotti back onto the baking sheet, and I'm just going to simply arrange these now. Cut side. Up. And this will help them start drying out. I just cut them with a pizza cutter. All right, and I'm gonna put these back in the oven for six minutes and then flip them. These have been in for six minutes toasting and now I'm just going to flip them over onto the other side and let the other side toast for about six minutes as well. Let them cool and then they're all done. The biscotti is baked, and we have this for the weekend. Woohoo! Representing with a little Ariana Grande today. Um, I love her. I think she's a great voice. All right. Um, I didn't take my vitamins this morning before I left, so I'm going to take my vitamins. No, I do not take all of these at once. Um, daily energy, I only take when I need it. Stress, only take when I need it. And sleep, I only take right before I go to bed, but I do take my probiotic, my multivitamin, and the skin one. Um, the others just stay out in case I need them at some point if I feel like I'm lagging or like right before a run, I will sometimes take those. I love Ollie products, as you know, their protein powder is still one of my favorites. I will be honest, I hate the texture and the taste of this skin one, but I just, get it over with. Um, so I always eat this one first. Probiotic tastes delicious, this one tastes delicious. So I'm gonna take my vitamins, get another cup of water, and yeah. Steven is off buying a new car today. Um, with our car purchases, we kind of just like let each other get whatever they want and don't interfere. So he's out buying a car and I'm, <laughs> I just, I blew, uh, blew my hair dry and I must've got a little volume in it. Um, 
<laughs> look past the hair. And while he's buying a car, I'm just doing a little restyling of the house, moving things from one room from the other. It's one of my favorite things to do. You don't always need to go out and buy things. Just shop your home and bring things from rooms that you love to other rooms where you can see them and enjoy them more often. So let me show you just like some quick things I'm changing around. One of the easiest ways to like completely transform spaces is by books. So I wanted to add a little bit more color. So I got brighter books that I have lying around. This is one of my favorite books. Um, this Kate Spade, Things We Love. It's such a great book. And then these white lanterns, this one here, and those two um, on the entertainment center, they were in my dining room. They're called the West Elm Constellation Light uh, Lanterns. And I absolutely love them, but never get to enjoy them. So I brought them in here because I wanted to brighten up the space because things were a little dark. These are my absolute favorite beads. I decorate with beads a lot. I think it just adds really cool texture to the space. So I have these beads. You'll see them all over the house. Um, those are not from Amazon, but I will leave these linked down below. They're the cheapest I've been able to find them. They're Amazon Prime. So easy. And then just walked around the house and I wanted to add a little bit more lighter and brighter things because that was looking quite dark. So I just moved my salt lamp down in there, added a little bit of white crystal rocks and some white containers, traded out the books here to brighten it up, put the two lanterns on there. So yeah, just like restyling, moving some things around. I think I want to get a new lamp there and a new lamp over there. Oh look, there are more beads hanging right here in this little basket. He's just laying around, not doing much, just chilling. Everyone asked what I was currently reading because I just wrapped up my last book. I just started this one, Rebels of Eden, and it's like a dystopia story. So if you like a dystopia, oh, I love a dystopia. I love a dystopia. Puppy, where's daddy at? Where's daddy? Last night made a great, great dinner. We had beef tacos, something called cowboy corn, um, some rice and some broccoli. I took time and made like a large dinner. We have lots of leftovers, but I filmed it for you and Steven loved the meal. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll that. We are making shredded beef tacos. So in here I have two pounds of organic beef chuck that I seared off in a pan, really high heat. Just kept rotating it. I had rubbed those in salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, and paprika. And then over here, I took two cups of beef stock and added it into this pan just to loosen up all the bits from browning the beef so you don't lose any of that flavor. And I'm going to add that to the beef and then we'll do the rest of the seasonings. As you guys know, this is, if you've been watching this channel, you know that this is one of my favorite contraptions. It's called the Chefin. I will leave it linked down below. I use it, I use it multiple times a week. I did two shallots and three large, large cloves of garlic. Now I'm going to add a can of the Rotel diced tomatoes and green chilies. Now here is a surprise. I am adding three quarter cups of orange juice. It just adds a really, really great citrus taste. Plus as it cooks down, it will thicken up as well. It kind of caramelize. My limes are really small, so I'm adding the juice of two limes. Now I'm going to add just a packet of fajita seasoning and not the whole thing. I'm adding about half of it and I will save the rest. And then I'm just going to cook this on high for three hours, then turn it down and cook it on low for probably another three. All right, if you ever need to shred meat, the best way, and I know a lot of you have already seen this, is to throw it in your mixer with the dough beater. It shreds the meat so quickly. I'm just going to throw this back into the crock pot. For the cowboy corn, I'm going to leave the recipe a link down below, but in here I have probably three ounces of cream cheese, a little bit of skim milk, a little bit of heavy cream, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, um, and then three tablespoons of flour. And I just have that whisked together. Here is a bag of defrosted and drained corn. And now I'm going to add cheddar cheese. It said half a cup. I'm just going to eyeball it and add less than that. 
And now I'm going to crumble in some of that bacon that I made earlier. And then I'm just gonna dump this into this greased pan. And then I'm just going to top with a little bit more cheese. And it's just a couple pieces of bacon. And then afterwards, I'm gonna finally cut up some chives to put over top of that once it comes out. That is in the oven for 20 minutes. So I think we're all set for dinner. I decided that we needed something green, so I also chopped up some broccoli with just salt and pepper, a little bit of lemon pepper seasoning, and just cooking it in the pan with a little bit of water um, because we need a green vegetable to go with all of this. The beef is done. I made Spanish rice, the corn is done, and we got some broccoli. I'm just gonna have the broccoli and the beef, the rest is for Steven. I might have a spoonful of this just to see how it tastes. Steven is not home yet, so I'm going to cover these up. Then we will heat up some tortillas on the stove and we'll be ready to go. I also have chives chopped up to throw on this right before we Swung by the P.O. box and um, I actually have something from the company Baron Bakes. I will leave it linked all below. She's a subscriber. Her cookies are the most beautiful things on the planet. I was actually just messaging her yesterday and I said I wish you shipped because they are so beautiful. She has like watercolor painted painting uh, cookies. And she had reached out because she had started um, designing some shirts. So she sent, I believe, myself one and Steven one. And they are so cute. So they say, eat cookies, be kind. Um, and it has her logo. I'm gonna leave the link for the shirts, her Instagram information, and everything else that you need um, because I think you should definitely go and support her. Uh, once again, her cookies are stunning. And I got this shipment and I thought it would be something that you would all be interested in. And the company reached out to me and I told them I, that it sounded like something that everyone would really enjoy on the channel. Um, the company is called Glyph. I'll show you. Oh, their boxes are really cool. Um, and they make completely sustainable shoes. So let me look at this shoe box. Like, look how beautiful it is. The packaging is incredible. Um, so it says Glyph is not part of a system. Own fewer things and escape to what matters. Enter a world of animal and free materials. Get ready for your feet to be loved. Um, put these on to continue. So they are completely recycled shoes. Uh, yeah, and they looked really interesting. And I told them, absolutely. What's awesome is there's a discount code linked down below for you. Uh, but they're just a really, really sleek loafer i'm gonna take this one out but i think there's something they're like digitally printed or something to that effect they have a nice rubber sole and they look really really chic they're like a beautiful navy blue with a gray trimming these are stunning i really really love them um so yeah i'm gonna leave all of their information linked down below i'm gonna try these on <laughs> the sole and this one says, you are an animal. Um, yeah, let's try them on and see what we think. So pardon my sweatpants, but let me tell you, I've put these on for a second and they are so comfortable. Oh my gosh. They feel like they like mold right to your feet. These are gonna be amazing work shoes because I feel like I can pull them off with like a dress pant or just even jeans. I love them. Once again, Glyph shoes, completely recycled, great for the environment, so comfortable. Oh my gosh, I love them. I absolutely love them. So check them out. Also, their packaging is stellar. I saw it say, keep me, and it said, loop glyphs with this box. Glyph.earth. backslash looping. So I went to the website, and basically, first of all, their website and interface is really great. It says, uh, looping. Glyphs are fully recyclable. Looping is a mechanism that allows customers to return glyphs whenever they are done with them and to get 20% off their next pair at the same time. So because the shoes are recyclable, you can send them back in the box, get 20% off a new pair, and it's just such a cool, cool thing.
I'm really pumped about this company. You have got to check them out. I just, yeah, it, they're awesome. And so the weekend is dying down. And um, recently, it's been asked a couple of times, probably like three or four times in the last week around um, motivation for like fitness and health. And I thought I would take a second to kind of just be like really honest with all of you. I found in the spring of this year, uh, with work being busy and demanding, I kind of just put myself on the back burner and I allowed myself to get off track. Not so much with working out, well, a little bit with working out. I feel like if you follow me on Instagram, you know I work out pretty consistently, um, but got a little off track, especially with eating and making really healthy choices. And I think for people who ask about weight loss and um, health journeys, for anyone who knows, I've if you look back at some of the videos, um, I've lost a significant amount of weight in my life um, and have gotten myself to a really healthy standpoint. And I think you got to give yourself the permission to like get a little off track once in a while and just know that sometimes things are not going to be in perfect balance. And it's about having the awareness to acknowledge that things are off track and to get yourself back focused and I think one thing that I did to get myself back on track this time and this time feels a little different than other times um, is I didn't try to do it all at once so for the first week that I decided I was going to get back on track with health and fitness it was um, just focused on eating so I just took a week I didn't work out I didn't think about working out I focused on my eating habits and the times I was eating and what I was eating and allowed myself that whole week to just focus on like the nutritional part of it and then the next week add in my exercise and set some sort of goal for myself physically so um, I'm training for a half marathon that I'll be running in September and I think those would be my two best pieces of feedback is do not try to do it all right away like don't try to give yourself this unrealistic eating and exercise routine get one under control first if eating isn't a big thing then just focus in on exercise um, but i found that week of just focusing on my nutrition and then layering back in my exercise which is something i already enjoy it felt really sustainable and really doable and i felt really successful and I was able to take that week and just like really focus on eating and thinking about the times that I'm eating and how I feel when I'm eating. And I think that's part of the reason why it feels a little different this time. And then lastly, set yourself a goal, even one that doesn't seem attainable at some point, give yourself the challenge and make sure it has a deadline. So I've already paid for this half marathon. I've already told my parents they have to come. So I have all sorts of accountability that I have to get my butt in gear and actually do it. Um, yeah, and feel free to reach out if you have questions or you want to start your own journey and don't know where to begin. I would love to talk to you more about that. I think it's something I'm going to document a little bit more here um, as we continue to go on and get further into it. Um, but I'm feeling really, really good. Feeling really good. So, my friends, I think this vlog is done. Um, you learned how to make some biscotti. We threw together an entire dinner. We unboxed a couple really cool things that you need to go check out. Um, and I'm excited for the next one. Also, another question I'm getting is how do you get so much done in a day? Um, and I'm going to do a non-traditional plan with me of like how I actually think about my day and my time and how I plan for every little moment. Because if you give it a time, you are more likely to get it done, whether it's reading a book or doing a big project. Um, but I'm going to sign off this video here and like I do with all of them, take care of yourself, take care of others, be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time. Bye-bye.